At this stage you should have VirtualBox installed with Windows Server 2012. The next thing we're going to be installing is a router. For this we're going to be using PFSense. PFSense is really awesome, it's open source and you can go ahead and download it from pfsense.org. So let's do that now. So here we are at the PFSense website. It's just pfsense.org. We can go ahead and click download. The first thing we need to do is select our architecture. If you don't know what your architecture is, all you have to do is right click on your start button in the bottom left hand corner of your screen, go to system, and right here it'll say system type. Mine says 64-bit operating system x64 based processor. What that means is I need the AMD64 version of the download. If this was to say 32-bit or x32, you need the i386 version. So in this case, I'm going to download the AMD64. Next, I'm going to select the CD ISO installer because I want to install it from the ISO. And then I'm going to click download. Now that we have PFSense downloaded, we need to extract it. I already have WinRAR installed, so I can just go ahead and extract this straight away. If you don't already have any kind of archival software, I'd really recommend WinRAR. So I'm just going to extract the files here. I already have PFSense downloaded, but I'm just going to overwrite it in this case. So now we have the ISO downloaded, we need to create a new virtual machine. So to create a new virtual machine, as before, we need to hit new. Then we need to enter a name for our virtual machine. I'm just going to go with PFSense. For the type, we're going to select BSD. And then for the version, we're going to select FreeBSD 64-bit. We're going to go with the default memory size. PFSense really doesn't use a lot of memory. And the default hard disk size is more than adequate. Same as with the Windows Server 2012 VM, we're going to keep this as a VDI. We're going to leave it as dynamically allocated so that it doesn't take up more space than it needs. So now we have the VM created, because it's going to be the first time we run it, it'll prompt us to insert an ISO image. So we'll just boot up the VM now, and it's going to ask us to select a startup disk. So I'm going to navigate to my downloads folder where I extracted the PFSense ISO, and hit start. So at this stage, you can either wait 10 seconds for it to auto boot, or you can hit enter. At this stage, you need to hit I to initialize the installer. You don't need to bother changing any of these settings because PFSense is 99% a web-based configurator. And because we're not doing anything fancy, we can just go ahead and go for the quick and easy install. It's now going to warn us that it's going to erase the entire contents of the disk. In this case, we're not that bothered because it's a virtual hard disk and we don't have anything to lose. And now the installer is going to run and it's not going to take very long at all. So now PFSense is technically installed. It's going to ask us to install a kernel. We're going to go with the standard kernel because as before, we don't have any special preferences. So it's now going to ask us to reboot. We're going to go ahead and do that. At this stage, we can remove the CD. So now it's going to boot into the installed version of PFSense. Doesn't take very long. It's a very lightweight operating system. It's now going to prompt us to configure network interfaces. We only have one install, which is a problem because we need two, it's a router. So for now, we're just going to go ahead with a basic configuration and then change it down the line. So right now, we don't need any VLANs, so I'm going to hit no. And then it's going to say, enter one interface name. Because we only have one interface, I'm just going to go with the only one we have. Now it's going to ask us for the LAN interface name. 
We don't have one installed at the moment, so we're just going to go ahead and hit enter to continue. Then it's going to double check that we want to proceed. Now PFSense is going to finish its boot and we can then shut it down again to add the new network interface. So we're presented with a text-based menu system. And in this case, we're going to hit option six to halt the system or shut it down. So now that the VM's powered off, we can add another network interface. So firstly, we're going to make a change to the existing network interface. I'm going to change it to bridged so that it gets a direct internet connection from the router in my house. Then we're going, going to go ahead and go to adapter to and attach it to an internal network. We then need to set a name for this network. I already have Demsec here, but you can type whatever network name you want. Once that's complete, all we have to do is hit OK and reboot the VM. So now PFSense is going to boot up again, and then we can go ahead and configure the interfaces correctly. So now that PFSense is finished booting, we're going to go ahead and hit option one to assign interfaces. It's going to ask us again whether we want VLANs. For the moment, we don't. So what I'm going to do now is right click on the little networking icon in VirtualBox and disconnect both of the adapters. So it's now going to be expecting one of the interfaces to come up to signify that that's the WAN interface. So I'm going to right click on the same icon and we know that adapter one is the adapter that we set to bridged. So that's the internet connection. So that's the one I'm going to enable now. I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds before hitting enter. And it's detected that successfully. For the LAN interface, we're going to repeat the same process. In this case, it's not auto detecting it, but we know there's only one interface left, EM1. So that's what we're going to enter. So we're being given the option for another optional interface. We don't have any, so we're just going to hit enter to continue. It's going to ask us to confirm that these are the settings that we want. We're going to hit yes. So now that we've set up our interfaces, we need to go ahead and assign an IP address to the LAN interface. To do that, it's option two on the menu. We want to edit the LAN interface, and that's option two in this case. And then it wants us to enter a new LAN IPv4 address. So I'm going to enter the IP address 192.168.2.1. Then it's going to ask us to enter a subnet. We won't be covering this in this episode, but for this case, we're just going to go with 24. Because we're configuring a LAN interface, we don't need to set an upstream gateway address. We don't want to set an IPv6 address in this case, so we're going to hit enter for none. And we do want to enable the DHCP server on the LAN. It's going to want us to enter a start address for the range of addresses which will be handed out to new clients on the network. So I'm going to go for 192.168.2.100 to 192.168.2.200, which gives us 100 hosts, which we're never going to have on this network. And we're just going to say yes in this case. So now we're done configuring this from the command line. To do this, we're going to use the Windows Server VM that was set up in the previous episode. We just need to make a couple of changes to the VM itself. If we right click on the same networking icon and go to network settings, we're going to change it so it's on the same network as the PFSense box. So I'm attaching it to the internal network with the name of Demsec, same as the PFSense machine. And then I'm going to log into this virtual machine. We need to verify that PFSense has given this machine an IP address. To do that, I'm just going to open command prompt and type ipconfig. So 
So in this case, it doesn't look like it's updated the IP address yet. To force the IP address to be renewed, what we can do is type ipconfig slash release and then the same thing again, but with slash renew. So now we've been given the first IP address in that range. So let's see if we can get on the internet. So we can get on the internet, so we know that our PFSense route is now working correctly. So now we can configure this in future episodes to do specific things and make our environment more realistic.